Little streams passed over their bodies. It descended trembling from their temples and ribs. The young men float on their backs, their white bellies bulge to the sun. They do not ask who seizes them fast. They do not know who puffs and declines with pendant and bending arch. They do not think whom they souse with spray. It's an amazing poem. Isaiah says something like, uh, let's see if I can remember the phrase. Okay, this is it. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. I mean, to me, that's like, when I read that, I thought, that's what I want to do, right? That's, that's like the mission of, you know, being a writer, to sort of wake us up to the mystery and miracle of what it means to be alive. You know, there's that, that, that cliche about heavy metal. You go to a heavy metal concert and the songs are all about these dark, terrible things, but everyone there is smiling and having a good time. And I think that, in a sense, that's what's so beautiful about art, is that it takes us to and articulate sometimes some really dark things about being human, being alive, and yet does it in a way that helps us navigate our own feelings. Sand Opera began in some sense as a response to everything that happened in the wake of the September 11th terrorist attacks. The sort of um, <clears throat> perilous, huge reaction, some, some would say sort of overreaction. The way in which our country sort of plunged into this, I, I suppose I would argue in retrospect, a kind of madness for, for some really good reasons. I mean, those attacks were horrific. It's also a, a deeply visual book. There are diagrams that were drawn by a Yemeni detainee who was rendered into secret prisons called black sites. It was a way of demonstrating the dislocation that, uh, that's part of war. There are also some fingerprints actually that were taken from Saddam Hussein when he was captured and the fingerprints are more or less lifelike so one of the sort of uncanny experiences you can have reading the book is not only to see Saddam's fingerprints, which as you know are, are unique like all of our fingerprints are, but also to place your fingers next to his fingers. You know, this is a man who's a terribly cruel tyrant and yet also had hands, you know, that, that were like ours. As the book started getting closer to being published, I wanted it to be more than an exploration of the heart of darkness, but also to remind myself why it is that we love each other. Why it is we get up every morning and we, we take care of um, children, we take care of ourselves, we try to build a life. So the middle of the book is um, a series of poems sort of about my daughter who's growing up in this milieu, in this time of war, and my astonishment at, at her sort of miraculous beauty, just this little person, and my increasing awareness of her being able to absorb some of these toxic elements of our time and trying to hold them off from her as best as possible. For example, I remember distinctly um, her saying, uh, what is an amputee? Is there such a thing as an orphan? She says, and it's such a beautiful question and a sad question at the same time. She can't imagine a situation in which a child has no parents, and yet she knows now because this word exists.
both of those things are very much part of the book. I wanted to look and listen to these very difficult things, but I also wanted to sing the sort of power and the durability of the human spirit and listen to that as well. I've been having a long-standing dialogue between my writing and my faith life. It's a sort of ongoing negotiation process. <laughs> Frost would call it, uh, calls poetry a lover's quarrel with the world, and I sort of feel like I have a lover's quarrel with my, you know, with the idea of religion, with faith. Season that we will learn the awful hunger of God, the nerve-fraying cry of God, the curdy vomit of God, the soiled swaddle of God, the constant... I want to avoid um, easy truths or dogmatic ideas of what that might look like, what a Catholic imagination might look like. If we're sort of made in the image of the ineffable in some sense, then then we have a lot of work to do, you know? We have a lot of area to play with. I don't have any answers, really. I just have questions and forms to sort of work those questions through. <laughs>